Okie dokie. Well, I think let's go ahead and get started. So hi everyone, I'm Rosalie. I work at Goldman Sachs. And today I am super excited to share with you how we started an OSPO. So I'll talk you through sort of how we planned it, uh, what, how we structured it, what our goals are, and sort of where we are today. So a little bit about the agenda. So I'll explain to you who is Goldman Sachs if you're not familiar. I'll talk about some of the projects that we've open sourced. I'll talk about you know, why after 150 years did we decide you know, now is the time to create an, an OSPO at Goldman Sachs. What motivated us? I'll talk about how we went about planning, what our goals are, how we've structured it, what our learnings are, and then what, the, what is the progress that we've made so far? And then I'm mostly excited about the Q&A portion because that's when I get to hear from you awesome people and you get to ask me really cool questions. So let's get started. Okay, so Goldman Sachs, so we have been around since 1869, which means that we have been around for more than 150 years. I will say that that is before my time. I am not that old. <laughs> so we are headquartered in New York. Um, so we are a leading global investment banking, securities, and investment management firm. Um, we have a wide range of financial services. Uh, we work with corporations, financial institutions, governments, and individuals. So let's talk a little bit about open source. So at Goldman Sachs, we love open source. Our engineers love using open source. We love contributing to it. Um, a couple of the projects that we've actually open sourced, I'll go through them here. But if you haven't explored our GitHub before, we're at GitHub uh, Goldman Sachs. And a couple of the projects that you'll see there are things like GSQuant, which is a Python toolkit for quantitative finance. Um, we also have given a project to the Eclipse Foundation called GS Collections, which is a collections framework for Java. And something that you won't see there that we're super excited about is a project that we actually gave to the um, FinTech Open Source Foundation. Anybody familiar with Finos? There we go, yep, great, great folks. Um, so we actually uh, worked with them and they, we gave them Legend, which is a data management and data governance platform. As you're probably aware, you know, data management and data governance in finance is quite complex. So this is a platform that we would love to have folks in the financial industry take a look at. So those are some of our projects. So now let's talk about motivation. So as already mentioned, we've open source projects before. Our engineers love open source. They love using it. They love contributing to it. So what are some of the reasons that we now decided to start an OSPO? So as mentioned, really strong open source usage. We really sort of wanted to improve the developer experience. So we wanted to make it really simple for folks to use and contribute to open source. We also want to give back to the developer community. So we're using a lot of open source. We are open sourcing projects. We also think that we have a lot of learnings and best practices that we've sort of accumulated in our sort of 150 year history that we want to share with the financial community as well. And we also know that if your company is open source friendly, then developers who love open source will be more likely to want to come and join your team. And so another thing for us is we really would love to continue attracting um, incredible talent. So again, some of the reasons are strong usage, want to improve the developer experience, want to make it easy to use and contribute to open source, uh, want to share want to be involved in the community. So you know, after today's talk, really want to encourage you, if you think there are ways that we can work together, definitely come chat with me, because we definitely want to collaborate. And then, as mentioned, really want to attract, continue to attract um, incredible talent. So with every big initiative, there's a lot of planning. So I want to talk a little bit now about how did we actually go about planning and creating this OSPO. So, the information that I'm going to share with you now, I wanted to do a little bit of context setting. The timeline is actually quite short. So last year in November, we started gathering feedback from folks. We spoke to like more than 100 plus engineers, engineering leaders, anybody in the company that is using or contributing to open source. So we gathered a lot of feedback and then we created a plan in the form of a memo. And then in April of this year, we presented it to our leadership. Our leadership is really incredible. We have folks, really incredible uh, CTO, CIO, folks that are ex-Yahoo, Amazon, who are really passionate about open source and want to see us more involved in the community. So we presented to them. And as you can see, they must have really liked the presentation because it was a yes. 
So um, May through July of this year, we formed a team. And then in August of this year, we actually announced the OSPO internally at the company. And the response was incredible. Folks were like, this is amazing. And then obviously the JIRA tickets started flowing in because folks were like, I want to do this and that and this. And so we have, um, I can tell you, we have been just slammed with inquiries and folks wanting to collaborate. Um, and we have thousands and thousands of engineers. So it's really cool that now we have a formal program for them to collaborate on open source. So now let's talk about the planning. So we knew that our ultimate goal is we want to streamline contribution and consumption. So in order to do this, we had to identify who would lead this initiative. So we landed on someone named Rohan Deshpande. He leads all of open source um, at Goldman Sachs. He was previously at Amazon. And just in general, he is a huge, huge fan of open source. In his free time, he likes to contribute. So he loves open source. He understands open source. So he was selected to run with this initiative. And um, I'm not just saying this because he is my boss, but he's also a really great person. So I think you know they picked a really great person for this initiative. Um, so what we did was we first said, what is the current state of open source at Goldman Sachs? What are we currently doing? What's working? Where is there room for improvement? We also figured out who are our stakeholders. So stakeholders throughout the company, and as mentioned, we have thousands and thousands of engineers. And then we figured out what are the use cases that we are trying to solve for. So what's the current state? Who are the stakeholders? What are the use cases to solve for? We then uh, took a couple months and we created a multi-year strategy in the form of a memo. We reviewed it with engineering leadership. And within that memo, there were several pillars. But they all sort of um, focus on simplifying contributing on behalf of the firm and personally. We want to connect and collaborate with the external community, you awesome folks. Um, and then we want to treat our developers as customers. So when we engage with our developers, we really want to hear from them, you know, what, what process, what do you like about the process, where is there's room for improvement. So we have frequent communication with our community to get that feedback. So we treat our developers as customers. So the outcome of all of that was we need to create an OSPO. And this OSPO is going to be responsible for procedures, policies, community engagement, and tooling. And we also acknowledge that with each of those pillars that I shared, that we still need to explore a lot of them a lot more and sort of do a deep dive. But the ultimate ask was for us to get started on this, we need to create a founding team. So we asked for really minimal funding to create a founding team. And so on that team, I get to work with really amazing folks. We have a program manager who has a really strong background in open source policies and procedures. We have an engineering lead who is a senior engineer who has many, many years of experience building software within Goldman Sachs. And is just really passionate about open source and really had seen how we were doing open source before, so familiar with the process, so was able to dive right in. And then they also happened to hire a developer advocate. I may or may not know her. Um, I think she's OK, um, who has experience in community and content and events for both internal and external. So as you can see here, a pretty small team that is sort of getting started on this initiative, right? And sort of how do we get started? Where do we want to go from here? So as mentioned, we spoke to a lot of engineers, more than 100 plus engineers. And in doing so, very quickly, we were able to realize who are our open source champions. So folks, one of our open source champions, he's amazing. He said, here's you know, 100 plus different projects that I want to bring in. So I'm like, you are very passionate about open source. You are awesome. Um, and basically, they started giving us feedback on what they're currently doing with open source, where they would like to see us go. So we have frequent check-ins with our open source champions across the company. So we're always asking them, hey, we're trying to do this. What do you think about that? So really important to figure out who are your champions. And then we also establish channels to get feedback. So we have like you know an internal kind of a chat channel. We have email. We have JIRA. Um, and we're also doing sort of these one hour sort of community uh, meetings where folks will be able to give us feedback as well, learn more about what we're doing. So with all of this, it's always important to figure out like what are your goals, right? Where are you heading? What are you trying to do? What are you aligned on? So our goals 
have been and, and very much are focused on meeting developers where they are. So with all of the, the processes that we're creating or any policies or anything that we want to launch, we figure out what is the current developer workflow for that and how can we meet folks where they are versus creating something totally brand new or sort of like, you know, bespoke. Um, we want to eliminate ambiguity. So anything where folks are like, hey, I want to do this, but I'm not sure sort of how to do that. Can you, can you give me more guidance on that? We actively work with developers on that as well. Um, we want to grow code and project contributions. So not just like open sourcing projects, you know, bug reports, patches, anything that we can help uh, these projects that we're using internally with, we, we definitely want to do that. Um, we want to give back to the community. So we want to open source projects. We want to share learnings on our blog. We really want to be involved. We want to engage with the community. We want to learn from you, right? What are your best practices? How can we start using those? And then we really want to share our learnings and our experiences. So a little bit about our structure. So we've got our founding team, which is quite small. Um, and we, we are actually hiring. Um, so we've got a program manager, a lead engineer, and, and myself, and then uh, Rohan, who leads the open source uh, program office. So we've, we've documented and endorsed our strategy, and we've converted that into OKRs. So like everything we do is being tracked against these OKRs, and we're reporting weekly on those, making sure that we're in a good spot. We use JIRA for all of our tracking our progress. We do weekly updates to engineering. Um, and then we also have, which is really fun, um, our lead engineer, when she first started on the team, she actually created a community newsletter that now has grown significantly where she was just sharing sort of what we were doing in the company with open source, what was coming up. So myself, from a community perspective, I thought that I said to her, you're doing an incredible job on this newsletter. Like you, you, sh you should be doing what I'm doing because um, it was just really, really great. So very much encourage folks, if you don't have an internal newsletter for your community, definitely create one, sort of recap all of these, these great highlights. So some of our learnings, what have we learned in the past couple months? Um, always, always focus on the end-to-end -end developer experience. As mentioned, developers are our customers. We want to give them a really great experience. Also, live the experience. So if you put together something like a process or some idea, instead of just rolling it out based on you know, feedback, personally experience that process and see how would you think about that. So live the experience. And whenever you're starting something brand new, there's a lot of moving pieces, right? And like for us, we have an enormous amount of interest from folks within the company. But ultimately, you have to identify sort of what is your North Star, right? Where are we today and where do we want to go? And I believe also that relationships are almost, you know, are basically everything. So build relationships. As you're building out your, you know, program office, meet with folks. So collaborate with folks in marketing and sales and, and training. If someone says to you, hey, like I heard you guys are doing this open source thing, right? What is that? Connect with people, um, answer their questions because, you know, they might not be as familiar with open source right now, but as they learn more, they are always really amazed. Their, their feedback to me is always, um, you know, this is incredible. This open source thing is really, really cool. So encourage you to share about your OSPO outside of just the engineering community as well. Um, and then be transparent and visible. So if something is working, great, share that. If there's room for improvement, share that. But keep folks updated on sort of the journey, right? Bring folks along. Keep them posted on what you're doing and where you're hoping to go. Communicate, communicate, communicate. Very, very important. Um, so some of the progress that we have made so far. So we have um, now we have an inventory of all of these contributors and contributions that we're making. We have a process for if folks want to contribute to projects or they want to be if they want to be able to do that, we're we're able to get them um, get that logged. And so we've got an inventory as mentioned. Um, bring your own device. Really cool. So. Um, folks are able to contribute to open source on behalf of Goldman Sachs, um, actually using one of their like their personal devices, like a personal laptop, which is really cool. Uh, we now also have a blog. So as mentioned, we very much want to share with folks. So on our blog, we are now sharing you know, everything that we've learned from sort of building products, scaling them, you know, launching and scaling them. So very much encourage you, if your um, OSPO is doing really interesting things that could be helpful for others, think about doing a blog. You know, definitely do social media. We now have um, a Twitter account as well. Um, if folks want to pull out their phone and follow, I'll, I'll take a second here, no problem, um, which is GS Developer. 
And we've also jo started joining foundations as well. So super excited to announce um, that we've joined OpenSSF and we've also joined the To Do group. Any folks in here part of those groups? Yeah, there we go. Awesome. <laughs> cool. So, you know, in only a couple months, we've made quite a lot of progress. And I'm personally excited about the fact that just we have so many inquiries from folks now wanting to work together, wanting to do things. The enthusiasm is just really, really high. Um, so I'm excited that it's not only internal interest, but now we're able to start doing external things with the community as well. So I think it's just it's kind of like it's just a very, very exciting experience. Um, and at this time, um, I would love to see if folks have any questions that I can answer. And if there's a question that I can't answer, connect with me afterwards and I'll connect you with the right person. Okay. Ye yes? I believe you, you also is driven by developers. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So uh, I want to know so, uh, many of the documents that uh, also is uh, something uh, related with the uh, legal teams in your uh, company. So what is Yeah, so we have a really, hmm? oh yes. So um, the question was asked is that this sounds like this is very much, the OSPO is very much driven by you know, developers. So the question is, you know, what is our relationship with legal? How do we work with legal on this? How do we do that? So I'm super excited. So I only joined a couple months ago and I instantly was put in touch with um, the person who is responsible for legal for the OSPO. And what I said to him was like, this is amazing. You remind me so much of someone that I worked with at a former company because he's ex this person and the team in general, the legal team in general is super excited about what we're trying to do. They understand the value. And so it's super collaborative. Like we meet, we meet frequently. We'll explain like a process that we're trying to drive. We'll answer any questions they have. So that I think goes back to the relationships aspect where it's, you know, build relationships with folks, right? Answer any questions they have, and then folks see the value of open source, and so they're happy to work together. So I would say we're really fortunate in that respect um, because we do work closely with them, but they've been super collaborative. I have, to, I have to give a quick shout out at my, at my former company. Um, Ashley will actually know this. My former company, um, one of our uh, legal contacts, there was actually a developer as well. So on the weekends, he would just be coding for fun. So I thought that was quite fun. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? That's a great one. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. OK. All right. Well. No, no other questions then. Well, thank, thank you very much, folks. And just as a quick note here, uh, we are hiring. That is my link tree. So if you know any great folks that are looking for really great uh, developer roles in finance, we also have an opening on our uh, open source team. Uh, definitely visit that link. Um, and just really want to thank you all for coming out today. So thank you so much. I want to clap for you. <laughs>